Hello everyone, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome back to a Kaiserreich Progress Report. Today we're going to be going over Progress Report 73, The Northern Reversal. Uh, I also heard the feedback from you guys that the audio, uh, the, the either the music was too high or my voice was too low, so I went and changed a little bit and I did some testing and I think this should be a good balance now. So uh, now it's 1927. Now we have to take a slight step back here, again we're going over the lore of China before uh, we hit 1936 and there's this situation where Sun Chuang Feng, uh, Zheng Zhu, uh, Zhu Lin and Wu Pifei have this tentative coalition that has been formed uh, against the KMT as well as the Guomindun to the west and uh, there is an optimism in China that this could potentially be leading to a new national government and a more permanent peace. Uh, but then the Northern Expedition happens, which we went over in the last uh, Progress Report overview. So this is seen as most disastrous to Zheng Zhulian because uh, he had hoped that Sun Chun Fang would be defeated by the KMT and then he his reinforcements would arrive instead of the Germans and he'd be the one who gets to be uh, the savior of China so to speak by defeating the Kuomintang and have to only deal with a uh, weakened Sun Chuan Fang. Uh, however, because of the German involvement, Zhang does not even get to be involved in the fighting against um, the KMT. However, the other side of the coin is that this also means that his armies are the most well supplied and rested of the, uh, of the warlords, and so he's in the best position to attack. However, while militarily he's in a strong position, politically uh, it's not going to look good if he's the one who goes on the offensive, especially because he has been using regionalist sentiment in Manchuria. Uh, to secure his power base, and so it, it, it doesn't look good for him to wage wars of aggression south of the wall, um, as well as him having very little in terms of legitimacy because he is a, essentially an upjump bandit. Uh, so the old marshal decides to declare himself a negotiator before anything. So he calls for, so Zheng Zhu Lin calls for a series of national reconstruction conferences to uh, create a new permanent constitution. However, this is merely a farce because at the same time as he's calling for these conferences, he sends south his subordinate Zheng Zhongcheng, aka the dog meat general. And so he sends this general into Sun Chuang Fang's territory, uh, claiming that his he's only there to deal with remnants of the Kuomintang uh, as they push south. Um, but in reality, he's creating a politically untenable situation, uh, and he's hoping for some sort of incident to happen that'll give him an excuse to uh, to go on the offensive. Hold on a sec, I just need to change something here. All right, so uh, this is actually this actually kind of reminds me of uh, I think it was before the Crimean War when the Russians sent this um, an admiral of theirs that only had one arm. He'd been hurt, but he lost his arm fighting the Ottomans and was an alcoholic and. You know, not a good situation. Anyway, anyway, we're talking about Chinese history, though, right now. Um, so, Zhang Zongcheng does something. Nobody is really in agreement on what, but he either shoots, starts shooting his gun, or he drives a tank through a wall, or whatever. Um, but uh, he starts a war between um, Nanjing and the Fengtian. Uh, so... Zhang Zhulian acts like he had nothing to do with this, and he says, he tells, um, I need to get him. <laughs> so, so Zhang tells Sun, I will rein him in if you agree to my terms. And the terms are just ridiculous, so, so they're rejected. So now what happens, we need to go to a map here, wrong map, here we go, is Zhang then begins two offensives. Um, one of them, he sends south from Tianjin to uh, Hukuo, uh, actually further south towards uh, almost towards Shanghai, uh, with the idea being that he's going to start besieging Nanking. 
Uh, and so now Sun is technically fighting on two fronts because he is still uh, dealing with the KMT to the south, even if it is just their remnants. And uh, so this puts the Feng Tian, uh, the Manchurians, in a really advantageous position because they already hold Beijing and Tianjin. And so they are now, they now could take Nanjing and Shanghai, which are, so these four are four of the, the biggest cities in the country. And Tianjin and Shanghai are, of course, are the most important economic ones in China. The only one of the big five he still would not have is Wuhan, uh, which is under Wu Pifei. And if he could hold all five of these cities, he's effectively unified China. Um, so he figures, I might as well just go for it all. Uh, so you have this this uh, Jinpu line that is created, and then the Jing Han line to the west. Uh, so one going from Tianjin to Nanking, and the other from uh, Beijing to Wuhan. And yeah, I know that there's different names here, so it has like Peking instead of Beijing. It, it's just one of those things with Chinese history, you gotta start referring to things by more than one name. Uh, it, it, anyway, anyway, um, so enter Wu Pu Fei, a uh, Pie Fu, Pie Fu with his crazy eyes, uh, and he goes for something daring. Uh, it actually kind of reminds me of um, the Byzantine Emperor. Which one was it? Was it Michael? No. But the one in the Byzantine Sassanid Wars who, uh, when Anatolia was being attacked and Constantinople was being besieged, he instead landed in eastern Anatolia and then went for the Persian um, capital cities uh, to force them, to force them back. Uh, but anyway, um, he, he, he daringly decides to attack uh, Zhuzhou, which is a city 37 miles away from Beijing, that city surrenders, and then um, a day later, the Jade Marshal, that's his nickname, is at Beijing. He's able to break in in about a week, um, uh, because the city walls, even though they're strong and they can actually uh, pull back modern artillery, uh, they cannot garrison everything. So basically, this was the plan that he does. He um, he, he, he comes north and he takes Beijing. So you see, one, two, takes these two cities. Um, now this takes Zhang Zhulin by surprise. Uh, but not too much by surprise because he did have some forces in reserve, some of which begin moving north from Tianjin. And he also has some uh, units that were here in the west that start to move south. So he's sandwiching the Jade Marshal here. Um, this is where the Germans once again uh, come into uh, come into play at the city of Langfang which is uh, like right here uh, there's a German garrison that according to the boxer protocol uh, are allowed to because they're creating open access here but they're allowed to, uh, to to maintain the area so the Germans tell the Feng Tian forces that they they have to be in the, that are on the trains that they have to be inspected and so they're only letting one car through at a time uh, now the Japanese, who of course uh, are behind the Feng Tian government, they want the Feng Tian government to win, uh, they get pissed about this, but the thing is, it was the Japanese themselves who set a precedent when they did the same thing in Manchuria to the forces of Wu Songli, which is not really relevant to this story. Um, so because of this, you have the classic uh, Wu, Wu Pei Feng, and he uses classic interior lion strategy. What do you do when you're between two enemy forces? You defeat them in piecemeal. So he first uh, goes north of uh, Beijing, uh, he wins uh, against the northern Feng Tian forces, he then flips back around and uh, cuts the rail link uh, to, to Tianjin uh, over here, uh, I should say this one, yeah. So first he defeats the southern forces, then he comes over here and cuts this rail line. Uh, so he's able to isolate these, these guys. Uh, Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then, uh, there's a series of counterattacks, and basically things just settle into a stalemate, and after a month, a truce is signed under the, uh, uh, the supervision of the German and Japanese governments. Uh, so a couple of agreements are made here. Uh, Wu Puifei still makes several concessions, 
The most important one is that he agrees to restore the deposed Emperor Puyi, uh, who at this time is staying at the German concession in Tianjin uh, ever since he got kicked out of the Forbidden City by Feng Yuuzhang. Uh, so the Germans are really in favor of this because they feel that uh, a lot of these issues that are going on in China are because the government's not balanced, that the monarchy was too autocratic, but the p potential Chinese Republic is uh, also not a good model, it's too weak in other ways, and so there needs to be a constitutional monarchy. And you also have to remember that in the Kaiserreich world, that by this time, the United States is already going undergoing its depression, it's been dealing with it for about two years. Uh, France has become syndicalist. Russia is uh, still recovering from the Civil War. Uh, and then China's coming out of you know, years of political upheaval and civil war. Uh, and so with all these things factored against him, even though Wei Pui Fu was able to get some early victories, the stalemate means that he doesn't have much of a choice in the matter. And you also have to remember that he was defeated two years earlier in 1925. Um... So, like, you know, so, so, so the, for example, Sun, where is he? Um, the button. Here we go. Yeah, uh, and remember, Sun used to be one of Wu's uh, subordinates and has broken away from him. Um, so, he, they also say that, um, Wu Pufei is saying that, uh, he, he get, he's gonna get the National Assembly to restore Pu Yi. And then in theory, he's going to run the Beijing government for the next two years. So now let's talk about um, a couple of alternate history contexts that Flame Fang says. Um, so some people are going, why is Wei Pufi, Pia Fu, I keep changing the pronunciations, I'm so sorry. It's like, why does Wu agree to all of this? Well, you have to understand that propaganda is, uh, is a big issue here. Pia Fu is not at heart a Republican, lowercase r Republican, uh, any more than Zheng Zhulang is a committed monarchist. This is um, propaganda mostly. Uh, when American journalists are talking to Wu, he says that he's a Chinese Washington and he has a picture of uh, George Washington in his office, things like that. So it's just a narrative. Um, and this is different from when the Japanese were invading because once the Japanese, it's like this is a literal invasion as far as he's concerned. They also have environmental factors. Uh, Wu and Zhang Zhulun, uh, both when they were young adults, were underneath the Qing dynasty. And you also have to remember that the Jinghua Revolution of 1911 was not a straight up coup, it was actually more of a transition. Um, so a lot of people who were in the Qing administration stay on in the new one. Uh, and also, in our own timeline, when the Allies win in the First World War, it's seen as a victory of democracy over militarism and republicanism over monarchy. But in the Kaiserreich timeline, Germany's the one who wins. So the Chinese take as the lesson militarism and constitutional monarchies and um, yeah, yeah just, just that are the stronger political ideologies. Uh, for, for a strong country. And uh, also, you do need to remember that there were parts of China that um, were definitely not too concerned with whether they were in a democracy or not, and uh, that China is still, there are still a lot of really remote areas of it, even in the 20th century, and that some people still thought the emperor was in power as late as the 1950s. By which point you have the people's, like the modern Chinese government, the People's Republic of China, has already been established by then. And they still think that the emperor is in charge. Um, so there you have it. That's uh, progress report number 73. I'm hoping that this is all helpful to you all. And uh, I, that I'm not confusing you guys too much with the uh, different names and things. Uh, so th I will see you all in uh, the next one, which I think is actually going to be a minor Monday report. Um, which has its own playlist, but all progress report and minor Monday playlists are in... Um, in the the uh, description below and what I'm let me know if you guys would want me to make like a master dev diary playlist where it has the progress reports and the minor Monday playlists in chronological order because uh, a lot of the times they feed into each other now that we're in the China updates anyway 
I'm Cone Korean History Games. Subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell so you're always notified whenever videos like this go up, and I'll see you around. Bye.